what's going on wrestling fans you are now dialed in to the pa power hour and we've got some really big news here tonight the piaa had their vote um, a little bit earlier a couple hours ago and they voted to push forward with fall sports so this is a, a big deal for for not only the the state of, of wrestling but also the state overall um, so we are going to do a special broadcast tonight just to talk a little bit about the implications that this may have for the potential of a wrestling season this year. We're going to be joined by a special guest, Mitch Rupert from the Williamsport Sun Gazette. So we're happy to have him on. He was sat through hours and hours of testimony on the PIAA uh, for the last couple of weeks. So I know he's he's ready to tell us a little bit about um, what's going on. So. But first, Eric, uh, what's been going on with you? I see you're you're wearing a blue shirt tonight, so that's that's more that's definitely not West Virginia colors. I didn't, I didn't need any more of your West Virginia stick, so uh, yeah, we're we're going teal today. You're going you're going teal. The ACC's playing, right? You guys are playing. ACC Pitt's going to be playing. So far, yeah. Okay, well, West Virginia is being Big Twelve. In, uh, did they? No, I think they're, they're playing. still on the fence. I think they're still on the fence, but they're. Are they they're, definitely they're, playing now? I think they're definitely playing. Come on, it's West Virginia. They'll they'll start their own. They'll start their own division if they have to to play. <laughs> that state that state of West Virginia needs Mountaineer football. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they, they ain't got nothing else. That, they, they that's need, true. They need Mountaineer football. That's true. Um, Eric, let's go to to Mitch Rupert and introduce him. I, I really want to hear what he has to say about um, the the PIAA's really. I mean, we didn't really get to hear a whole lot of the discussion. It was more of the, the vote, but I know they got to do a little question and answer with, with uh, Dr. Lombardi about what to expect here now that they've pushed forward. But first of all, Mitch, thanks for joining us here tonight. My pleasure, man. I'm glad to be here because I got a question for you, Jeff. I'm not convinced by your argument that there's, you're not hiding a ponytail in the back <laughs> so are you uh, I, I, you know i'm glad to be here do you do you want me to do you want me to prove to you i got no ponytail there's nothing in the back mitch there's nothing to, i'm not just let the legend go I'm, I'm just saying you're always front facing we, we don't know i'm just curious oh my gosh you know mitch i i ex, i expect that from eric but you know i thought we were i thought we were close in that you and i have had many long <laughs> evenings inside the giant center you know where no one else is there the security's like come on guys you guys you guys gotta go but then, and then you come in here and you, you rip on uh, well, rip on the hair. I don't know. Well, you know what, Mitch? We're still happy to have you here. <laughs> the hair uh, looks good, man. Hey, the hair looks good. I'm just I'm just not con- I wasn't convinced. I'm just you. saying. I, I, I feel you. Uh, Mitch, tell us a little bit about um, – you said it was anticlimactic and there really wasn't a whole mm-hmm. lot there. Um, but tell us a little bit about uh, the vote, how it happened. Was there any discussion involved with it? There was zero discussion, which is – maybe the most surprising aspect of this whole thing to me, you know, they, uh, uh, President Frank Vanjikas, he opened up the floor for any discussion, any questions that anybody had, and nobody said a word. Like the only thing that was said was uh, Doug Bohannon from, I think from District 3, um, made the proposal to, to move forward with sports. Somebody got a second and then they voted and, and that was it. I mean, you talk about anticlimactic, as soon as it was done, they're like, okay, What's the next thing we move on to? And it's like, I've been sitting here for 45 minutes for that. Like that, that's what I waited for, you know? So that was really surprising to me, but, but I think the PIAA has done their legwork. You know, I think they've already done the hardest part of this. They, they've done their work to believe that everything can be done safely. Um, first and foremost. So I don't think there was a lot that needed to be said today. Yeah, and, and I would agree with you, Mitch, with the, I mean, we had two weeks, right? There was two weeks of, of kind of deliberation, if you will. Um, and I, I think a lot of people had the feeling just based on comments that were being made throughout the week. I, I know Melissa Birch was on a, on a call and, and, you know, kind of said, yeah, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty confident. Um, I know Dr. Lombardi had, had made some comments. So you kind of felt like the feeling was that this was going to pass. Um, but like you said, there wasn't really, you didn't really get to hear a lot of discussion. What what about the question and answer with Dr. Lombardi? Because I know um, a lot of people were, were asking questions specifically about, about this. So first and foremost, I think the, the concern is whether or not there's gonna be fans in the stands. And, and as of right now, there are gonna be no spectators 
in the stands. Everybody is still, and, and that's the governor's, um, the, the state's guidelines um, that you can only have 250 outside, 25 for indoor events. And, and with the way football teams are constructed, that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for fans. Now, Dr. Lombardi said they're open to discussions with the administration about hopefully moving away from a hard number cap and going to a percentage capacity of the facility. They're looking for a 25% capacity, which would at least get the parents of all the players in. And I think you have to have the parents in there, at least one parent for each kid, just in case somebody gets hurt, you gotta have them there. Right. So that was kind of the big discussion around that. They, they did pass a, a second thing right afterwards that opened the door for schools um, who are not playing this fall, who've decided they're not gonna play this fall to have alternative op, uh, opportunities to play. So maybe that means they can go play in the spring or maybe later down the road if, if things improve and they wanna go play, they can do that. They opened up the door to make it possible to play as much as you possibly can when you possibly can. So I, th I think the PIAA has everybody's interests in mind of, of what everyone wants, which is to compete and to have people there to watch it. So that those were kind of the two big things we took away today. Mitch, uh, this has obviously been an issue that has really kind of galvanized uh, sports parents across the state uh, pushing for this. Do you think that had an impact on the, the PIAA's decision? I know they, they you know, were kind of blindsided by the, the Wolf administration announcement a couple weeks ago uh, saying that they, they weren't in favor of it. But do you think that that push from the parents and really the the grassroots support behind it uh, had an impact on the PIAA? Absolutely it did, and Dr. Lombardi said as much too. He said, we heard all, all your calls, we read all your emails, we understood how much it meant to you to, to have this the, the kids play, and it means something to us too. They understand athletics are part of the educational process, and they want the, the kids to play just as much as the parents do. He even turned to the, the parents and said, Maybe you want to contact your local legislator when it comes to having spectators and the fans. Put a little pressure on them to make a decision and try and make something happen for us. So they listened to their constituents, and then they made the decision that it was clear their constituents wanted. Yeah, imagine that, government listening to constituents. Oh, and moving yeah, forward. Who, who'd have thunk it, man? <laughs> who'd have thunk it? Uh, now, Mitch, I know you, you uh, had you had contacted a lawyer about some of the, the liability, right? Because that's a, one of the biggest things that I know a lot of people and probably a lot of school districts and administrations are, are mulling right now is whether or not, you know, there's going to be some specific, um, I wouldn't say immunity, but, you know, something mm -hmm. that, that's in place where um, if a kid were to, to contract COVID-19 um, while playing that the, the school is not liable and, um, you know, the, was there any discussion on that, or, or where do you think that stands with the uh, the PIAA and, and having fall sports? Sure, and and it, it stood out to me as soon as Dr. Lombardi said in his testimony uh, before the Athletic Oversight Committee Tuesday, he said, "I'm asking you, I'm asking the state legislature for help on, on getting us immunity, on getting the schools immunity." That said to me that it was really important to them. He also said today that nothing has changed since his statement then. They have talked about it with insurance providers for, for um, coverage for both themselves and the individual schools, but they said it's probably going to be cost prohibitive to do. Um, I still think, you know, that story I did talking to a, a lawyer about it, whose whole thing is liability, that's what he does. I still think there, you're open the doors to things happening, but you still have a semblance of negligence for for something like that to, to go forward for something like that to even see a courtroom but we have to understand that negligence involves not following the parameters the protocols that have been set forth and if you skip even one of those or you let a kid that has a, a fever that's two tenths of a degree over what they say you can't play with if they let that kid play there's negligence involved in that so i don't want to see it you know i, I think everybody uh, or people thought that I, I was trying to stir up something or, or create a fear in people or create a fear in schools, but we need to be realistic about what we're opening the door to here. Mitch, is that something that have you heard either on or off the record from, from school administrators, coaches, that types of things, that, that that's one of their big concerns is the liability issues going forward? 
I haven't heard that from anybody. I haven't asked anybody about that per se. Um, but if you tell me that a school hasn't consulted a lawyer about all of this, I, I'd say you're nuts. You know, they, they have to have looked at this and seen just what their liability is, how much trouble they could get in if things aren't followed to the T, you know? And um, I would think that maybe some of those concerns are why individual schools are deciding not to play this fault and who can fault them. I mean, the same people that are saying, you know, everybody's so happy are the same people who are gonna complain when your property taxes go through the roof because you're dealing with four lawsuits. Yeah, and and you kind of raise a good point there with the, you know, with the constituents and what is actually what do they actually want, um, and and I think like you said, it's negligence is negligence, so we should we should mm-hmm. make sure we're we're aware of that. Um, one thing that I you know obviously, Mitch, we we cover wrestling. This is the fall sports, but what are your feelings on on wrestling? I know you are are very heavily involved in, in wrestling. What do you think, <laughs> what do you think is, what are the, the ramifications? What's the implications for, for us in wrestling? And, and what do you, what do you see coming of this? There's 13 weight classes. That means <laughs> 26 kids got to wrestle. Um, how do you fit 26 kids inside a gym when you're only allowed 25? I don't know. You know, I've told people that, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm not afraid uh, of the coronavirus or, or things like that. I live my life. I go to the store or as I need to go to the store. I don't want to sit in a gym with 500 other people right now either, because I don't know that everybody is being as cautious as, as everybody else. You know, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it because that's what my job says I have to do, you know, but, um, what it's going to mean for wrestling. I don't know, man. I think that's, that's four months, five months down the road, three months. What month are we in? Four months down the road. (laughs) It's still 2020. We know, yeah, it, it's clearly still 2020. Um, that's four months down the road, and so many things can change with this stuff between now and next week, let alone now in December. So my guess is the PIAA is going to start working now on a plan for that. Um, they have to. they got to have contingencies and be ready to go. Well, Mitch, we, we certainly appreciate your insight. Uh, I know you, you, you spent a lot of time on the phone today and, and throughout the couple weeks with the PIAA, and we appreciate um, you taking some time out to talk to us tonight um, about this and provide some insight into it. I, I you know, for, for your sake, I, I hope we are being able to cover wrestling soon so I can prove mm-hmm. to you that I do not have a ponytail. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, I bring, I'm looking I, forward to it, man. I do. All right, Mitch. Well, again, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon, okay? My pleasure, guys. Take care. Be well. Stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Mitch. So, Eric, um, a couple things that that I heard, right? Um, One was was about the fans, right? So Mm -hmm. there were some things being said about um, whether fans were going to be permitted or not. And then, of course, you had some school districts or you had some – even districts that are, you know, saying, well, maybe we're not going to, to have fall sports. Um, so regardless of whether the PIAA says this is a go, it, you know, we know that there's some school districts out there that are, are opting out of this. So what does well, this, what does this do for, for the, those schools? Does that change it? Well, and I, I think one key distinction is that the, the PIAA said that this will be up to the individual districts, the individual school districts. So they're not saying, yeah, you have to have, you know, they're not threatening, oh, we're going to kick you out of the the organization if if you don't have your your PIAA sports this year. But they're saying you have the opportunity to go ahead and hold that. And I I think that's a key distinction. And I think that's important because, as you mentioned, uh, I think was it uh, was a union town was uh, one that said they weren't going to have any uh, any fall sports. And so, I mean. Could that change? Maybe, but I would think that if, if your school has already come out and said, hey, look, we don't feel like it's safe, it, it probably would be pretty hard to, to make that change uh, to convince them that, yeah, this is is going to be okay. Now, were you surprised by the, the, the vote? The, I mean, heavily, I thought it would be a little bit closer. Uh, 25 yeah. to 5, I think, was the final, 25 to 5. So were you surprised by the more outpouring in support of that? 
Uh, I mean, everything we've heard from the, the PIAA uh, leading up to this was that they were pretty confident uh, that, that they could go ahead and have the fall sports season as we're, uh, as you know, with as many precautions as they can and, and still be safe. So I did feel like that they would definitely go ahead with it. I don't know if, if 25 to 5, you know, that is a, a pretty good majority there that uh, that most of the, the people recommended going ahead with the fall sports season. So I, I think that shows the, the confidence that the PIAA has has in, in their ability to do it safely and that they, as, as Mitch said, that they've done their homework, they've pushed ahead with, hey, this is how we can do it, this is why it's safe, and I, I think that confidence has led to that uh, overwhelming majority vote uh, of 25 to 5. And not only that, but the outpouring of, of support, like you said, you're at work and there's just moms <laughs> and dads watching, you know, trying to trying to get up with the, the press conference and, and trying to stay on top of whether there was going to be sports or not in the fall. Um, it, it seems like even people, you know, because, of course, you're always, you're always going to have those people that are, are going to be, you know, I call them like fringes, you know, whether they're whole for it or, or entirely against it. You're always going to have those people on, on those different ends of the spectrum. But it seemed like a lot of just reasonable middle of the road people were like, yeah, we, we got to play sports. So um, you, you think that had a lot to, to do with the fact that the PIAA saw that, heard that, um, and now they're, they wanted to push forward? Because remember, they're, they're going against what the governor recommended. You know, he's just one person. Well, I think I, I think the, the key to this is that if you say let's go ahead and let's have the season and you run into problems you can always shut it down if you go two weeks in if you say no we're not going to do it and you go two weeks in then you can't start it up and say you know what we probably could have done this you know so i think you go at it cautiously you take all the precautions that you can you do everything to, to protect the student athletes and put their safety first and if if we see issues, I think they will shut it down. But, you know, I think you go into it doing everything you can to, to make sure that everyone's safe and, and go about it as you as you can. And, and as Mitch said, you know, uh, because I asked him about, about wrestling and the, the implications that this has for wrestling, um, we are several months away from a, a wrestling season. Wrestling is competed indoors. Um, it's also competed at the height of cold and flu season. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have all these different factors, you know, and I had a lot of people say, like, what, what does this do for wrestling? And, and I, you know, I hate to say it, but I don't know if it does a whole lot for wrestling. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt wrestling. But, right. There, there's not a step backward, right. but I don't know that it was a giant leap forward either. So when you look at just the, you know, the fall sports in general, um, you know, being competed mainly outside, you, you look at wrestling, and as Mitch said, you know, indoors, we're talking about how many wrestlers are on, on, a, on a team. You know, at the the most, you have 14, actually, or 13 wrestling, um, but you have backups, you have managers, you have multiple coaches, you have referees, you have scorers, you have announcers. Now you're talking about, okay, how, how are we going to do this, right? Um, and I know in Allegheny County, for example, the, the Allegheny County high schools were saying, well, we can't even play a game outside because the county restrict, uh, restrictions were 50 people um, in an outdoor setting. So they couldn't they couldn't have under 50 people at a football game. So I believe today I was reading that the Allegheny County made some type of uh, exemption or um, some type of stipulation where they could actually have more than 50 people in a in a setting. Yeah, I did see something from White, a tweet from him saying that uh, to that effect that uh, that they could hold the games, but parents and, and fans wouldn't be able to attend. So, I mean, you know, I, I think we, we've got to go in baby steps with this. If, uh, you know, the, the choice is sporting events with no fans is still better than no sporting events at all, isn't it? I mean, I would I would think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is about, you know, the kids and, and getting them – uh, being able to play the sports so yeah of course I, I would say but I agree with Mitch like you almost have to have I feel like you'd always you'd have to have a parent there um, at least one but I don't know does that does that coach assume rely you know liability and, and well I mean uh, there, 
ideally everybody's parents go to every sporting event that their their kids play in but we all know that that's not the case and so you know there are times when parents have to work can't make it to a baseball game whatever and yeah i think the the coach in in that instance and the trainer uh they assume the the decision making process there and say hey we'll you know if johnny's hurt we'll decide how bad it is what needs to be done and, and go from there so yeah i think that it, it if we can, we'd get at least one parent or guardian to, to the games. But, you know, there are still situations where that doesn't happen, even whenever the, it, it's open to everyone. The one thing I, I wanted to ask Mitch, and I did it, because um, you know how the uh, Governor Wolf had said something along the lines of, uh, if, if your school is having virtual classes, you certainly shouldn't be having uh, any type of athletic events I'm assuming this this applies across the board, right? This isn't even if you're on a, even if you're doing virtual for for nine weeks or even a hybrid. Uh, I'm assuming that you you still can have athletics, right? I mean, I guess that's it'd be a up good to the, question, right? Because I I told you how the the moms uh, throughout the building here were all seemed to to find a way to watch the the PIAA uh, vote while I couldn't, but uh, they uh, I I talked to one and she said that that she felt bad for those kids that were were virtual learning. She made it sound like they could not participate. I'm not sure of that. I mean, if it's open to the PIAA, then maybe that is the case that uh, that they can go ahead. So I'm not 100% sure on that. You know, and and one thing that I I keep on hearing a lot is it, it's it's up to that individual district. It's up to those uh, individual schools, right? So, you know, you have the state up here. Uh, you have Governor Wolf making making suggestions, but it's a PIAA that that governs athletic sports in high school they're going to make a recommendation which which they did then you have 12 districts in the state of pennsylvania all 12 of those districts can have their own you know their own determination of yes we're going to to continue with fall sports as recommended by the piaa or that district's going to opt out right they're going to say we're, we're not doing that um but then you have those individual schools that can also determine whether they're going to participate in sports and maybe to what extent they're going to participate in sports. Maybe it's only this sport. Maybe it's, so I think we're going to see kind of like a, a, a just a mashup of different, you know, scenarios like, oh, well, this team over here, you know, Franklin Regional is only doing um, games within a certain region or, or maybe, you know, this team over here, they're going to be playing um, only individual instead of team. I, I don't know. I, I just... I see it being very convoluted and a little bit confusing. Uh, I think football is probably the most straightforward thing, right? It, but that, isn't that a common sense approach, though? I mean, we've we've talked about it before. You know, there's a, a big difference between uh, a school district in Philadelphia or Allegheny County, you know, where there are more cases, versus one of the rural counties, like we've used Elk County before as the example, where you know there might not be nearly as many cases. Uh, I, I think that the the safety and the the fear factor in the the more populated counties and areas with more cases, you're going to be much more hesitant to to go ahead and be able to to perform in these sports like you might normally do. Whereas some of the other places are saying, hey, you know, I don't know anyone who's had COVID. I don't know anyone who knows anyone who's had COVID. You know, so why can't we go ahead and do this? Yeah, and and. You know, it, it's as Mitch said, uh, it's so wrestling season is so far along. It's it's so far away, um, even though it's really, you know, at this time we would be preparing for the surge. We'd be doing a lot of other things. But it, the wrestling season really, I mean, in 2020, uh, with the way this year is going, it's a long way away. A whole heck of a lot can change. You know, as you even said, if if a football team or somebody, you know, gets it and, and now they're they're shutting things down, I mean, look at the professional sports leagues right uh you know the pirates had the which is probably a good thing the pirates the less games the pirates are playing the better because they're they're absolutely awful um but you look at some of the mlb teams that have contracted it and then they had to cancel series um you know the other thing i i heard dr lombardi said is if we're fortunate enough to have playoffs we would like to do a statewide playoff um you know, I think they're just taking it one step at a time, really, at this point. I mean, I, the the playoffs, that, that's a long, that's another thing that's a long way away, too. Yeah, uh, and I will admit to being a little uh, 
you know, I, I feel like it, it's certainly in the, the PIAA's best interest if they can have playoffs to have playoffs because that's where the majority of their funding comes from. So if they're going to continue to be an organization, they, you know, are going to do everything they can to have playoffs. I'm not suggesting that they would put the, the safety of, of student athletes at risk for that. But, it, you know, there, there's a realistic part that says, hey, you know, if we can do this, we need to do it because we and we need to figure out a way to have fans there in order to, to continue to be a, a, an ongoing organization. Right. And I mean, you look at the Big Ten, you look at all these other major conferences and you're everyone's talking about the billions of dollars that they're they're missing in revenue, the, all the billions of dollars and, and the trickle down effect of that. So um, I see what you're saying with the PIAA. It's like, OK, yeah, they, they need in order to have an operating budget you need to, to have some income. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, what's, what's a sports season without playoffs? You know, what's, we don't just play to play, we play to win. Right, Eric. Yeah, I, you're right. But at the same time, again, I think if you, you talk to, to kids and parents and say, look, we can have a season and, you know, go out there and, and have fun and, you know, play it. Or we can say, no, we're, we're definitely not going to, you know, have a season. They, they'll take the season even without playoffs. Is again, it's it's yeah. Would you rather have a season at normal with fans, with playoffs, with all that? Absolutely. But if the choice is no sports or sports, you're gonna take it even if you can't play, because the reality is, is you know, the majority of these, like I look at football, you know, there are maybe 16, 20 teams that that realistically have a shot at winning a, a state title in each division. I mean, that's that's pretty broad. Uh, you know, going that uh, that number. In reality, 95% of the teams in the state aren't going to win a state title. They, they really have no shot at it. Well, this is the time now when people are like, well, Philly, District 12, they can't compete. You know, not only do they recruit kids from Jersey and they have, <laughs> you know, St. Joe's Catholic and all these other, you know, they're like, well, if District 12's out, then we're definitely playing because we actually have a shot to, to win <laughs> a state title, you know, because we're we're – Homegrown. Everyone's homegrown except for for those schools, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want to get into a whole uh, debate over. Yeah, we're not. We've versus... done the uh, the recruiting. Uh, you know, the the private school, public school. We've we've done a lot on that already. Eric and I think we both agree that um, in, in terms of wrestling, right? Because because we are a wrestling focused organization, and um, we are anxious to to figure out whether we're going to have a season or not. Um, in terms of this wrestling season, how much does this vote have an effect on that <clears throat> today? I just think it shows that the PIAA is willing, ready, and able to try to have sports at, at you know at any cost. Not any cost, um, but they're they're willing to to go against the governor. They're willing to to take you know what he would consider a risk to have high school students compete in athletics. So. I think if anything, it just affirms the fact that the PIAA is going to at least try to have a wrestling season. And, and as Mitch said, they're probably working on some type of contingency for those indoor winter sports, such as wrestling, basketball, um, even swimming and diving. So, where you know, where do you think we stand in terms of likelihood, or, or uh, you know, what do you think? What, what, what do you? What are your thoughts on? just today in general and just the overall vibe of, of whether we're going to have wrestling or not. I would say that I'm a little more optimistic than I was a couple of weeks ago. You know, whenever the announcement first came out, whenever the, the Wolf administration said, no, uh, you know, this is, is not something that we're pushing for. We don't think that uh, there should be the sports at this time. Uh, I was really, you know, really down and really pessimistic about the, uh, the likelihood of a uh, wrestling season happening in PIAA. And, you know, the, the, the college football scene was also another reason that, that I wasn't optimistic because I've, I've said before, you know, if, if this all the money that we talked about, the billions of dollars riding on it, if they can't figure out a way to, to make it happen, how can the, the small school district with a, a tiny operating budget? But, you know, after, after thinking about it and listening to some of the arguments, I, I realized that hey, it is a different situation because, like we said, they're not traveling across states like, you know, college football conferences are going across eight, nine states, something like that. Uh, here you're, you're looking at a pretty small geographic area where you, the risk factor isn't nearly as great in that. 
And so I think that definitely helps. Uh, as we said, we're, we're months down the line, so hopefully somehow we get a handle on this and, and continue to, to put the brakes on things and, and slow down the, the number of cases, the number of deaths, the number of hospitalizations, and we can, we can see a positive trend moving in towards wrestling season. And, you know, that makes me a little more optimistic that, uh, that this decision today, if they said no, that they're... That they're... Eric, you, do, do you, we lost you there. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine now. Yeah, it looked like we lost you there can for you a second. See me? Yeah, you, yeah, you were trying to power out it. Yeah, I saw the lights flicker off. I saw the lights flicker yeah, off. Yeah, it was, it was really strange. I've never had that are you, happen. Are you before. scared, Eric? Do you need assistance? Do you need Do you need medical no, I, assistance? I think I'm all right. I think okay. I'm okay. Um, so, so yes, you you are a pessimist. You know, you were pessimistic about the fact that I'm not pessimistic. You, you, I'm you realistic. Are. You're, 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 I, I, okay. Each his own. Um, I think that I like to think of myself as slightly optimistic. I I agree with you, uh, in the sense that this gives me optimism today. Um, in hearing what the PIAA is saying and, and looking at the the votes, um, in terms of of, you know, them, willing and able to to push sports forward, especially in the fall. Um, but there's a few things that that are going to factor into that. You know, how does this work? If fall sports completely, you know, just fail in that sense and we have a bunch of outbreaks and we have a bunch of um you know schools that are shutting down because of spread in sports um that's obviously going to take a toll on on winter sports um but between now and, and wrestling season there's so many variables you know um heck there's an election there's there's a presidential election taking place really yeah i don't know if you heard that or not um no i, I hadn't heard yeah, that it's crazy. maybe uh, see a commercial on tv or something every now and then <laughs> Or, or, or just anywhere you go, there's, there's, there's yeah. something you can't get away from it. Um, it's, it, there's a lot, there's a lot that's gonna go into to play here, um, and, and a lot of the things that Dr. Lombardi was referencing and going back to were the fact that these sports were already being played at a, a youth recreational level. Um, so I'd be curious to see if, if there are wrestling tournaments being held specifically in Pennsylvania. You know what are the numbers like from there and um you know can we can we have data that shows well you know this this event held in, in this area um everyone was screened going in and, and you know no one contracted COVID. I, I don't know if that's even possible but um i'm curious to see if if there's anything like that where they can say definitively wrestling can happen and, and here's why well, I think that, uh, you, you know, you can't prove a negative, but I think that if there had been a situation where there was a, a big outbreak stemming from a wrestling tournament or, you know, flag football or baseball or whatever from a youth competition, that that really would have been, been news and you, that would have gotten out. Uh, the, the fact that we haven't heard about that, I think, is a sign that that hasn't happened. You know, you wouldn't be able to, to hide that if you had a, a summer wrestling tournament or, you know, late summer, I guess now. And there was a, a it was traced back to that, that, you know, 20 cases of COVID came from that one event. You know, you would have heard about that. That wouldn't be under wraps. Uh, you, you couldn't contain that if that happened. So the fact that we haven't heard about it, I think, speaks to the success of these events that there hasn't been. or high school athletic competitions that we've had in the, the quote-unquote off-season season so far. Yeah, and it, it's, I mean, we have to pay close attention to what goes on with, with these fall sports and um, as kids start getting back into school. Because remember, a lot, of, a lot of school districts are not, they're not having in-person classes quite yet. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing that at a college level as well. So if, if you know, once kids start actually coming back and you have full classrooms and, and you have full sports um, with or without fans, it's if we don't see uh, a big surge, we don't see that that 
um, second wave of coronavirus, then that really, I think, sets it up nicely for for winter sports such as wrestling, where um, we may be able to have something, uh, at least somewhat of a season. So, But before we go into um, what maybe uh, college wrestling is going to look like, we're going to go to a short commercial break here with the Tactical Mind. Be right back. This is the Tactical Mind, and I work with athletes in the field of sports psychology as a cognitive performance coach. Within five minutes of talking to a parent, they make the connection right away that this would be great for my kid to have when they're in college, when they're just going through the ups and downs of high school. Who wouldn't benefit from having more self-awareness? Who wouldn't benefit from having the ability to self-regulate our emotions and our counterproductive thoughts? Who wouldn't benefit from having more optimism, not just on the field, but in life? The TacticalMindLLC.com for more information on uh, getting your brain ready for competition and getting the mental edge and getting the, the, the mental advantage on your opponents. Definitely check out the Tactical Mind with my good friend Nick Fuller. Eric, I want to go to some college news because the EIWA, uh, they came out with a, um, a release that said that uh, they're going to allow practices in the fall semester but they're not going to have any competition until no, you know, no sooner than, than January 1st of 2021. Um, were you able to see that? And what were your thoughts on something like that? Uh, I did not see that specific release, but honestly, it doesn't surprise me. And I mean, I'd heard months ago that, uh, that we were looking at probably a, a January 1st uh, season as far as wrestling goes for the NCAA. And I know like Willie Saylor has, has pushed for, you know, uh, uh, changing of the, the season and the way it is. Uh, I don't know that he was specifically saying make it a one semester season, you know, just after January 1st. But I think he had talked about, you know, either uh, a dual meet season and part of it and then a tournament season. Uh, but as far as uh, it, it goes, I mean, that's a really wrestling season is really long. And OK, a lot of the sports seasons are long, but basketball, you're not trying to hold a weight from November to March. Uh, you know, it, that, that's a long time for guys to, to try to, to be a, a down to weight, you know, to cut weight. So I, I think uh, one semester, I think is fine. I think you can really tweak the season a little bit and have it in the second semester and allow guys to, to live a little bit, you know, through Thanksgiving and Christmas and not be, you know, trying to hold their weight the whole time throughout all those months of the season. Yeah, I mean, could you? I mean, can you imagine that that whole season, um, you know, being in the, the spring semester, so to speak? That would be that'd be huge for for a lot of uh, a lot of wrestlers. Well, and I mean, maybe you you back it up a little farther instead of going against the the NCAA basketball tournament like we're doing right now most of the time with the the NCAA wrestling tournament. Maybe you back it up into to April whenever the yeah, you'll have maybe Major League Baseball going on, but other than that, it'll slow down a little bit as far as not going up against that that behemoth that is the March Madness. And if you look at what the EIWA said, was there the conference is planning a EIWA centric schedule, and what they say it's designed to maximize the number of bouts for our wrestlers. There are currently eight weekends between the New Year and the final weekend of the regular season. So, you look at that. They say dual meets are going to be the priority, um, but they also say that they're going to have the EIAA championships at Cornell on March 5th and 7th. So they are, are kind of stepping up and saying, okay, this is – because they are a wrestling-specific um, division, right? They're a conference mm -hmm. specifically for wrestling. And you look at them already taking steps to say, okay, we're not – we're agreeing to not compete during the, the fall semester – but we can we can practice in the fall semester, and then our priorities are focused more on dual meets within that conference. So, I think if anything, you're going to see other conferences maybe look at something like what they're doing and say, okay, maybe we should focus on maybe we're not going to go to the Southern Scuffle, maybe we're not going to go to Midlands, but maybe we are just going to have you know Big Ten duels and then a Big Ten championship, something along those lines. Um, I would hope that. But then again, I mean, if the Big Ten was willing to to say no to college football, yeah, I I say that's that's easier for them to say. Well, you know what? I don't. We didn't have football. How are we gonna have wrestling too? Um, 
the only the only benefit I see um, is the fact that wrestling was was cut short last year, so they didn't have an NCAA championship. You're saying that you're going to have kids miss two two years of of NCAA championship postseason competition. That's that's pretty harsh, even for the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah, that would that would really be depressing. Uh, I hope that we're we're able to to push it back, get a handle on everything, and as you said last uh, last week, you know the. COVID doesn't understand the calendar. It doesn't know that January 1st, you know, okay, we're not going to infect anyone else again. Everybody's going to be healthy now because it's, it's 2021. So, I mean, that's, that's not a realistic uh, thing to, to expect that all of a sudden, just because we've moved it back to January 1st, that everybody's going to be fine. But I do think that, you know, obviously the, the more time you give yourself, the better opportunity you have of, of getting a, a handle on all of this and, and figuring out that the best ways to do things to, to move forward as we can and you know hopefully we have a, a uh, something coming soon that a vaccine that we can get a handle on this and, and have everything under control and as we said we do have a few months left that we can still push toward that and hopefully by the time wrestling season is ready to come around we can actually uh, be in a, a position where we can go forward with it and without all the limitations that, that we're worried about. And one thing I like, I really like that the EIAA came out with this because um, they, they made some, some pretty good points. They said the current preliminary schedules for the season are not possible, which, I mean, that that's not a shock, right? That But they're stayed in the obvious. Like, clearly the schedules that we had coming into the season, um, they're, they're just not going to be possible. What they also said is non-conference matches are permitted, uh, but they may necessarily be done to minimize the regional opponents. So they may actually do things like, um, you know, within that, that certain geographic area, uh, you know, you may still have Drexel and Penn wrestle, but you know, that may be it. You, you know, you may have Brown or, or Princeton, Harvard wrestle, but that may, that may be it. So, um, with the big 10, like you said, you're talking about crossing some, you know, a significant number of state lines, um, you know, look at the travel restrictions that are placed on on individuals traveling from from hotspot states to others. You know, I would just got off the the list for um, quarantining if you come to Pennsylvania from Iowa. So, you know, you got to look at some of those types of uh, decisions as well, whether you're you're actually going to be traveling or not. Do you think we'll see more tri meets and quad meets and things like that, where we say, okay, you know, we we may not be able to have a, a Southern scuffle or Midlands or, you know, Reno or uh, Vegas, uh, Cliff Keen, but maybe we can get four Big Ten teams together. I mean, how much fun would it be to, to see Iowa, uh, Penn State, uh, Ohio State, you know, have all them in one location? Of course, if, if you can't have the fans in there, it would really suck. But, uh, you know, you could you could do that where you're limiting the travel, where you're saying, okay, we're not going to make Penn State travel five times to the Midwest during the season. But let's send them there and, and have three or four teams that they can match up against and compete in, in one setting. Uh, you know, I, to me, that makes sense if, if what you're fearful of is the, the travel and how that can really increase the, the danger and in, in the spread of, of COVID. So I think if, if you go that route, that gives you an opportunity to still get those competitions in, like you're saying with the EIWA, where they're really prioritizing those conference matches and at the same time limiting the amount of travel that these teams are doing. Yeah, and I think that's dependent upon, you know, wh where we're at in terms of the the state of, the, you know, the COVID rates in that particular state. So, for example, if you had it in Iowa um, where the, the numbers are lower and, and you, I think it's going to come down to those individual schools if, if, say, they have winter sports that are allowed. Um, those individual schools may say we're only going to compete um, – against people within you know 600 miles of, of our campus um which i mean it all is kind of goofy I don't, I don't know like to to compete in 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 pennsylvania as opposed to virginia or maryland i mean i i don't know it just seems kind of it just seems a little bit silly to, to me well I, yeah the, the state lines again are arbitrary i mean the you know it doesn't matter so much the state lines as, as the hot spots but, you know, we've we've talked before about all the, the challenges that wrestling faces with it being, you know, such a contact sport and, you know, bodily fluids and, you know, just the, the ease with which you could 
potentially transfer and and pass along the the, the virus. Uh, I do think this is the the one positive that we have is you you can't get four football teams together and say okay yeah we're gonna play everybody in one day you know you can't do it with basketball I mean they don't play double headers in these sports they don't you know things like that but uh, I think with wrestling that is the one opportunity that we have to say hey let's let's limit the travel but let's still try to get as much competition in there as we can if we're allowed to go forward with this and, and I I would hope that you know, a quad meet or a tri meet, something like that would, would make more sense to, to universities because you're saying, okay, we're going to do it in one, you know, one fell swoop. We're doing it in one setting. Um, so you're limiting the travel. So instead of, you know, how many times did Penn State have to, to fly or take a bus last year uh, to get to where they needed to go to, to compete? That's a, it's a lot of traveling. Um, so if you're saying, okay, we're only going to have like three weekends of competition, right? Three weekends uh, of, of quad meets, tri meets, whatever you want. Um, and then the rest are, you know, is, is geared towards the postseason. because l- let's be honest, if we are going to have a season, it probably is not going to start until end of January. So you're already looking at, you know, cutting down on, on some those early season tournaments, like the Cliff Keen, um, Southern Scuffle. So now you're saying, okay, well, if we're only competing from January to, to February between, the, the conference tournaments, then you're only going to have a limited number of weekends uh, to actually have competition. So why not limit it to say, hey, these are the three competition weekends, even if you want to stagger them. Um, just get some matches under your belt and then say, okay, now we're going to go into conference tournaments and slowly you know, make that transition into um, opening it up a little bit. I, I, still don't, I still don't see fans ever being a part of, of this, but um, maybe that's just me being pessimistic. Maybe you rubbed off on me a little bit. <laughs> oh, so it's my fault now. That, uh, that now I, I agree. I mean, it, that would be a really quick turnaround. It feels like to uh, to go from where we are right now to saying, yeah, we can put fifteen thousand people in in Carver Hawkeye for a dual meet. I mean, I don't think that's really realistic. But uh, you know, if we can watch these guys wrestle. Even if if we can't all be there, you know, I'd take that over where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's more that's better than than not having wrestling. The other question I have is, so if there is not a wrestling season per se, an official wrestling season, um, you know, a lot of people say in high school we're going to see a lot more wrestlers just doing the the travel wrestling, and they're going to you know do more of a the recreational wrestling where you have these non-sanctioned events um, taking place. What can those college wrestlers do? Because, you know, how, well, how does that hurt them and, and eligibility? What if there is no the, season? The first thing you're going to say is this is going to be the biggest season ever for red shirts. Yeah. Everybody who has a red shirt available is probably going to take it this year. You know, I don't know. You, you know, Spencer really well. I don't know if you've talked to his family at all, but I mean, this would make perfect sense to take the red shirt this year, you know, why risk going out there and, you know, getting a couple matches in and them saying, Nope, sorry, we can't, can't do it. Can't have an NCAA championships this season, you know, take the red shirt. Hopefully by 2021 too, you know, everything is, is good and we can go back to normal and get the season in. And I think you're, you're also going to see that in, in high school, you know, you're going to see more kids than ever that are going to be held back uh, in, in junior high and, and those levels and saying, you know what, let's, let's let Johnny just take the, the year and, and go back to the eighth grade. I know of one really ho- high profile kid, you know, that, that that's already been decided that that's going to happen. And I know that a lot more are pushing for that, that it's going to be a, a situation where if you can do it, a lot of people are going to opt for that because of just the, the risk factors of, of going to school of, you know, the, the, uncertainty of, of how it's all going to work and you know never mind the fact that uh, you can give your kid a little bit of an advantage if you can hold him back a year and, and have him going into varsity a year later than than he might otherwise be yeah i mean so it's hard enough when i do the top incoming freshman report um it's <laughs> it's super hard to do um even without covid because you're trying to figure out if there's a lot of kids that get held back. You know, it's like you go through and you see their grade and you're like, okay, well, they were in seventh grade last year. They're going to be in eighth grade this year. All right. They were in eighth grade last year. They're going to be ninth grade this year. Nope, not really. Um, I can't tell you how many wrestlers I've put 
on the top incoming freshman report um, that actually repeated eighth grade or they stayed, they, you know, mm-hmm. were held back. Um, so this year, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if I should be doing a top incoming freshman report because I, I know there's a lot of kids that just, like you said, if, if the, if they have the ability to, um, which I would assume with COVID, there's going to be a lot of uh, l- restrictions lifted and there's going to be more flexibility mm-hmm. for kids to be held back. Um, it, it's going to be hard to, to make sense of heads or tails of whether this kid is actually going to be in, in ninth grade or not. You know, um, you know, do you lose that year of quote eligibility in high school to, to have four years, uh, you know, where you, you may actually have four seasons. Um, I don't know. So that's another thing is you're looking at the, the freshmen coming in. I think you're right. You're going to see a lot of college wrestlers take red shirts. You're going to see a lot of fresh or, you know, what should be freshman age wrestlers, um, being held back into eighth grade, but, uh, you never really answered the question, Eric, college wrestlers, if they don't have a season, you know, can they, are, what if there's an open tournament, you know, what's a, a non NCA tournament, like you wouldn't have eligibility um, issues with you compete unattached, you know, say Wyoming, right? You're in the middle of Wyoming and you have a, a wrestling tournament. Can they, can they compete in that? Uh, I, they should be able to, I mean, I don't see why they, if you're saying, Hey, the, the only, I guess the only thing the NCAA could say is look, we don't feel that it's safe. And if you're going outside of this, to, to get competition and doing something that we feel is unsafe, we're not going to reward you for that behavior and say, yeah, you get an extra uh, extra year and you're able to do that. You know, we're going to consider that being a year for you. Could, but, you know, it, it it's easier. For, I, I guess it, good. it's easier for high school students and, and athletes to, to do something like that um, because there, there's just less restrictions on them uh, as opposed to a, a college athlete. Um, you know, if they're not enrolled in the school, right? Uh, they're taking a gray shirt. They're doing, you know, whatever it is where they're not actually enrolled in uh, an academic institution. Can they compete? And I guess as long as they're not getting paid, right? Um, they, they should be able to compete in some type of, I guess the question I'm getting at is, will there still be some form of, of tournaments? Like can flow put on a, a college age <laughs> tournament if there's no season? It would seem to me like, uh, I mean, you know, it, they can go and wrestle in university nationals, whether they're uh, or whatever it's called now, uh, you know, they, they can go and do that and it doesn't affect their. I know that's freestyle, but, you know, it's it's I, I think you should still be able to go and, and wrestle if it's not an NCAA sanctioned tournament. How can the NCAA say this is this is not right? I mean, it, it's not your call if it's, you know, just an open tournament. Yeah, so I mean, I guess it would come down to to if you are enrolled in a in a school, if you are a part of a a, a team, um, because there's a lot of kids out there that are just itching to get back on the mat, and and you know they have to to be wanting to to have some type of competition. So if there is no season, um, if the NCAA comes in and or whatever conference they're a part of says there's no winter winter sports and there's no wrestling, um, you know they should have the ability to go compete in, in some type of, some type of event without, um, you know, losing any eligibility requirements or any losing, uh, you know, something like that. I, I don't know though. Uh, I would like to see it happen, but if there are no, if there are no winter sports and there is no wrestling, I'd at least like to see some of our top guys compete in, in something. Right. I, I would think that if, uh, if the NCAA says, no, we're not giving you another year, of eligibility, but we're also not having a season. I think you're going to see a lot of wrestlers and, and programs go rogue and be like, well, wait a minute. What, what are you actually doing for us? You know, we're, we're going to lose the year anyway. Why not go and, and put on our own events and hold our own things and let our guys compete? I mean, what if, if I'm a senior and I'm not going to get the year back, what do you, what can you do to me? You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's. I guess. Yeah, you're right. If you're especially to say that you're going to lose your scholarship, which that would be a big one, obviously. But, but if you're you know, a senior, other than that, I mean, yeah. If if I'm not getting another year of eligibility, you know, what can you do to me? Yeah, uh, you you bring up a good point there, and and uh, you know, maybe they can pull in Nebraska and be like, you know what, we're going to explore options. Maybe we're going to go to another conference or something. If the exactly, NCAA, you know, if, if they we'll say start our own wrestling well, league, it's not like they. 
it, you know, maybe we'll have the SEC finally come back to, to, to wrestling and we'll have, uh, you know, a bunch of SEC programs that are not actually SEC programs to join, you know, Big Ten schools that are. All right, now you're getting really optimistic that not only is wrestling not going to be hurt by this, but it's going to grow and uh, expand into the SEC. Well, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a like you said, like it's human nature to be resilient and to, to figure out ways. And you said, go rogue. Um, it's human nature that if people want something, they're going to do it. You know, you can, well, and I think especially the wrestling community, if you tell them, Hey, you're not allowed to wrestle this year, they're going to be like, screw you. I'm finding a way. Or we, you know, we can just have virtual, the virtual NCAAs again. You know, I mean, those, those were awesome last year for, you know, the situation, but don't want it again. What yeah, real NCAA I, I, tournament? I, and we would have been in a I, I've football got a, stadium. We've got hotel rooms in St. Louis, Jeff. We're we're ready. Yeah, we're I, I don't I, I don't know why you booked those those rooms already because I hope you got insurance on that because we <laughs> there's a good chance uh, we may not. I I still have flights. You know, I still have credits and flights for for I NCAAs. No, I've got like four different airlines that I've got credits on that you know so many flights have been canceled and yeah just disastrous yeah it is disastrous um so so recapping piwa says today um after two weeks of deliberation after governor wolf says uh, i'm not quite sure having sports uh is a good thing that they're going to have fall sports they're going to push ahead leaving it up to the individual schools or, or conferences or or not conferences districts um which is good for potential for wrestling but it doesn't really mean a whole lot for for wrestling because we just really don't know there's so many variables and factors between now and and you know december but let's not forget you know open rooms and and having practices you know can you even and i was talking to some other uh coaches about this is can you even have a wrestling practice in your school because where do most open gyms and most um you know club practices occur unless you have your own facility can you can you have the school actually open up the doors and let you use the wrestling room i i think the answer for a lot of times it's no you can't so that's going to be something I, i'm very curious to see what happens is if, if you're not going to be able to wrestle and practice in the school where are you going to go i say you start renting out your basement jeff M- my Put basement down there yeah yeah my no i have a cape cod <laughs> You can't see it because this is all disguised. I make it look like, you know, a high profile studio. You know, we don't have flow money. And this there's actually like a pantry behind me right now. So, no, I, I have a washer and dryer. I have a dog that barks. Um, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do uh, uh, practices down here. The PA Power. What do you call What do you call your studio? The PA Power I'm, Pad? going to be the PA Power Pit. Oh, God. That's it's like a little – no, not P I T T, just P I T. Oh, okay, pit. Well, it's like a, it, you know, it's it's going to be seven by twelve feet. Yeah. It's not big. It's a little pit in the basement, but hopefully it's going to have good sound and internet at some point and uh, basically a jail some cell. Cool stuff on the walls and yeah, basically a jail cell. Yeah. Uh, you but said it's my jail cell. You said pit because at, at WVU there was a place called the pit at one time where people would go to tailgate during the games. It was kind of obviously in a pit. Uh, Joe Youngblood can tell you all about this and a lot of not so socially distanced things going on there. Um, yeah, I, I don't, we, we're, we're going to have a, uh, have to keep a close eye on things. Um, I, I would like to get a coach on next week to talk about those types of things, such as having open gyms, having, having practice. And, and if so, where are you going to do it? Because you're, you're probably not gonna be able to have it in a school. So I'd be curious to hear what wrestling does moving forward. But, uh, Eric, anything else? Any uh, closing thoughts for you? Well, it, it wasn't a great day. You know, it wasn't great news, but it wasn't bad news. So at that, this point, that's we'll take that and move forward and, and try to be optimistic and, and find a way to get wrestling going. Okay. All right, Eric. I like it. You're, you're coming over to the, the side of light. You know, your, 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 your glass. Do you have a glass there? Because it must have water in it. Is it is it full? It does. Is it half? Uh, is it half? Half empty. Oh. Oh no. Jeez, Eric, you're doing so well. <laughs> hey, uh, we appreciate it. Special PA Power Friday night edition. Don't get too crazy out there. Um, 
stay tuned for for some big news coming from PA Power Wrestling, Eric. I know we've been teasing it for a little bit, but we got some really big news coming um, next week. Dyson Gold will be with me to 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 give uh, some. You know, to spill the beans, if you will, of what we have to, to offer. Um, I'm pretty excited. I know you're pretty excited. So I, I can't wait to share the news with everybody. But in the meantime, stay dialed in to PA Power Wrestling on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. By the way, we had a bunch of kids commit. I didn't want to I, – I, I know we're over our, our hour. But Caden Berger from Reynolds is going to Clarion. Um, Gage Musser from Commodore Perry is going to Air Force. Um, and Tate Nichter – uh, from Chambersburg, he's going to Drexel to join his older brother. So a couple uh, big-name commits coming in. So keep an eye out. We'll be uh, putting that stuff out on social media as they come in. All right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, not too many guys from PA that I remember going to Air Force, so that's kind of neat to uh, to have one going out there. Yeah, uh, I think th- I-, I can remember a couple, the Giorgios from Schuylkill Valley maybe, um, but, yeah, there, there's yeah, there's not a whole lot. Um, it's like kind of like going to Wyoming. So, yeah. Um, Stay tuned for uh, some more, and hopefully we have some more good news to bring you next week. Thanks for listening. Have a good night.